Welcome to the first month challenge for our intuitive textile challenge. This month we're going to explore backgrounds and some mark making with items you can find around your house. So this is, I have two pieces of fabric here. I bought these from my local thrift shop. Um, it may have been a sheet, I'm not sure. It was already cut up when I got it. It's very thin and we're going to play with that. I also have some other items, a smaller piece of that same sheet. I have coffee filter. I bought some of the sheer fabric that you um, from curtains from that same thrift spot. Some regular thin ty typing paper and I have some deli paper. That's so when we do our fiber page we can make it a mixed media page. I also have some ribbon, some lace, some of the tools that I found, I have some of this corrugated board, it's just, um, I'm not even sure what it came in, but it's, it's nicely raised. I have some of my dirty stencils. I have this is a sink mat I got from the dollar store. It's got flowers on it. And then just found objects. And so the very first challenge, grab a basket or a box or a container and just kind of walk around the house. Find bubble wrap. This is an, um, an old eraser that I just carved a leaf shape. This is the netting around clementines. I've got uh, an old card my tape dispenser. This is one of the plastic corners that hold a shelving unit together. A cylinder. I'm not sure what that's off of, but it's got a nice edge. This is just some chipboard and some fun foam, and I cut some shapes to use. So just run around, find anything that has just an edge or you think will make an impression. These are rubbing plates and we're going to give those a try as well. They've got raised edges on them and we will um, make some marks with that as well. So let's talk about the paints a little bit. I have put a few paints in the welts here. I have some of my Liquitex Basics. This is a heavy body paint. I've added that. I have some of the Jacquard textile paint that I added there. It's a little bit, um, the, my paints are old, so it's a little thicker than it would be if you purchase it new. Um, in this one, I do have um, just some De La Rowney paints in those two colors. And um, I do have some of my Lumineer um, by Jacquard. Ooh, these are so pretty. I don't have that out yet. And then in some water. So. Since we're doing fabric, and I do have some heavy body paints here, we will need to thin them out. And there's several ways we can do that. We can thin them out using water. We can thin them out using a fluid matte medium. There is a um, GAC 100, which is um, an acrylic polymer. It just, it's the acrylic paint without the pigments. And we have some floating medium, and this will give your paint a nice transparent look. And we'll play with those. All right, I'm gonna push this to the side. Under my work surface, I do have a canvas to protect my cutting mat. Um, I've used this at many, many workshops, and um, I, I, I just love the way it's, it's turning out. I may make something with that one day. So I want to try two techniques. I've come kind of feeling a botanical theme, so I'm going to do two backgrounds, and then my motif that I'm going to add for this month is going to be bot botanical. It can be anything that you choose. So I want to do one background uh, with a um, using one of these textures and some mark making, and the other background I'm going to paint and scrunch up really, really tight and let it dry and you'll get a feel for what that looks like. So let's give this a try. And because I wet the fabric and it becomes heavier, 
whatever I lay this on, I'm going to take some water and just kind of mute that edge a little bit. All right. I'm just going to use this, this fun cardboard. So I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to lay it on that cardboard. Now, what we're trying to do here is get that fabric to settle into the the texture there. So in order to get it to do that, it needs to be weighted down. So I'm going to take the rest of this paint and I'm going to kind of go with the, the with the grain of it. Let's push it down in there. And then I'm going to give it a good spritz. paper and just press this down into the grooves and I want it to be very organic all right let's move this aside now I'm going to lay this in this cookie sheet and let that dry for my second one for this one To start with, I'm going to use one of these nice dirty stencils. I've got a, a firmer brush and I'm just going to use water. Because my stencils are dirty, I'm going to grab some of the paint that's already on them and push that through. Almost like I'm cleaning my stencil. And sometimes, depending on the medium I use with these stencils, you'll get a nice imprint and sometimes it's very, very subtle. Let's see what we've got. Yeah, we've got some imprint. Let's try another. Let's try the Clementine wrapper. This is just water. If you've used sprays of any kind that are water reactive, you'll get good texture from that. We, we got some good texture from the first one. Let's come in with some of these mark making tools. Let's put a little more paint in here. I'm going to add a little bit of water to it. Okay, we need to talk about the surface. So this is very hard, and so is this. So there's a rule of thumb when using any of these, and that is if it's a hard tool, you need a soft surface. If it's a soft tool, you need a hard surface. So I have a little bit of felt laying here, and I am going to put that under my fabric. So that makes this a nice soft surface which is going to give me a better print. I've got a glob on there. Let's see if we can get some of that off. And this is the one I'm going to scrunch up and let it dry, so it does not matter that we don't have a perfect print. And maybe a few circles. This is a um, tape dispenser. Love this one. And since we're going to, to scrunch this one up, and I do want to put something green on top when I do the botanicals, I'm going to maybe add, let's go with like a little bit of an orange. No, nope, I'm going to add this one.
All right, since I'm not stamping any longer, I'm going to remove the felt, put it back on my hard surface. And I am going to really layer the paint on this time. A little bit of water. Let's bring over my... I use an old cookie sheet for this just because it makes it easy to move it around to let it dry. I don't have to move it once I'm done. All right, so I'm going to add some yellow. I know this looks like I'm making a hot mess. Bear with me. And I'm going to add some of the fuchsia. And some water. And I am going to get that very wet. And now we're going to scrunch. We are going to scrunch that up into this tiny ball. A little more. And then you can come back in and paint the edges. Maybe even add some more of the yellow. And I do have a little piece of scrap here. I'm just gonna I'm gonna wrap that around. Tie it up, and that has to sit until it's completely dry. And so let's work on, I'm, I have a smaller piece of fabric that I want to do green so that I can do the leaves. So I am going to take my water. Got a little bit of the two different greens in here. And I'm putting the rubbing plate under my fabric. So I'm just going to take a little bit. And let's rub it. That's going to make nice leaves. Do a little bit of this lace. Because I don't want the lace to be extremely stiff, I'm going to add a little bit of water. And we'll let that dry. And that little piece of ribbon. There we go. I'll do that one as well. Now this ribbon has a polka dot running down it, which acts as a little bit of a resist. I like the way that looks. We'll let that one dry. 